do um, first is we're going to do the marinade for the chicken and let that marinate till towards the end because it doesn't take very long to cook at all. So the marinade is um, under the chicken saute and then we've got the peanut sauce underneath, which we will make later on. So for the, um, for the chicken, um, we are going to combine the shallot and the lemongrass and we're going to do it to a paste in either your blender or your food processor, all right? Um, if you manage to get fresh lemongrass, that's great. If you didn't and you've only got um, either the frozen paste and frozen chopped up stuff or the dried stuff, um, we can still put that in the blender as well. But if you're gonna use a whole uh, lemongrass, you wanna use, with the help of add a knife, I suppose, about a third of it. Now with the whole lemongrass, usually what I do is I take off this outer stalk like that. And if the rest is dry, um, I take off a bit more, but this one's pretty good. And then I usually trim off the top sort of two, two or three inches. You often have to sort of hit it because it's, it's a very dry um, ingredient and it gets kind of sort of funny. And then about a third of this roughly, all right, is what we're gonna put into the uh, food processor or your, or your blender, whichever you're gonna use. And we're gonna do that with um, a shallot. So just peel your skin off your shallot, just like you would with a, a regular onion. Keep my ingredients here to make sure we don't miss anything. I have a tendency to miss things out when I'm talking. <laughs> And um, I tend to like to use my food processor more, even though it's a relatively small amount. I do find that the blender very often things get kind of stuck in there and you, you end up scraping it and scraping it to try and get it to break up. Um, but it's personal, personal choice. All right, whatever, whatever kind of works. If you have a mini food processor, that's probably even better for something, for something like this. Oops. Plugging it in usually means it works a bit better. And then I'm gonna put it, um, and then I'm gonna combine that with the turmeric, coriander, cumin, uh, salt and brown sugar, which I have in a little bowl here, all right? I just put them all in together. Because you're gonna get the flavor from these, whatever happens to it. Now you can, you know, I wonder if you guys, I haven't actually seen it, but I'm wondering whether you can actually buy this combination of the paste. Obviously you can get, you know, the, um, ginger and garlic paste, which I like to use uh, for some things. That's really good. But I have never seen this um, in a in a paste form. Get out as much of it as you can. All right. We're just going to rinse this out because we're going to use this again in a little bit for something else. So pop that right there. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this together. I'm gonna use a saucepan. Now again, obviously, if you can leave this overnight, um, that's kind of better. You know, if you wanna be planning on doing these, do it and uh, have it for dinner the following night or you know, in the summertime, get it out on the barbecue or whatever. All right, so I've mixed mine up quite a bit there. Now with the chicken, what we want to do with your chicken is we want to cut it. Um, we're going to cut this in, um, in slices, okay? Now it's better to do this before you marinate because obviously more of it will get absorbed. Sometimes if your knife's not very sharp, a good thing to do is to partially freeze your chicken breasts. Uh, if you want, if you can, because it makes it easier to slice it. But um, my knife's pretty sharp. So you want to kind of do slices on the diagonal so you get a wider piece than the actual chicken breast. You can sort of see what I'm doing here. In fact, if I sit, switch over to my other camera, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. All right. Um, which means I have to work backwards, but that's okay. But you see, I'm doing it on the diagonal. This makes it easy then to. Um, thread these onto your skewers. Um, now, if you have metals, if you have wooden skewers, um, 
if you haven't already, you should soak them in some water like this. All right, so they don't burn. If you're using metal ones, you don't need to do that. But if you soak those, they'll be soft enough and won't burn by the time we get to cook these. So obviously, you know, saute is found all over the Eastern um, countries, Asian countries, I should say. Um, and this is just a Malaysian version of it that is um, sold on the street. And I have it, my, my nephew, um, my nephew-in-law is of um, Malaysian descent. And uh, at his wedding, they, we had this. And he was telling me about, um, he's lived here all his life, in England all his life, but he was telling me that when they went, all the great food they got, and he suggested some of these dishes to me. So um, I kind of picked up on his, on his knowledge. I'd love to go, they've been, I have not, unfortunately. So if you can see, slice like this, okay? Now, you're gonna, when you marinate these, you wanna do it in, um, just in a, in a bowl. I use, I'm using a plastic bowl right here. I'm going to pop the chicken in here and I'm going to let this marinate at room temperature, all right, because um, it will absorb the marinade better at room temperature in a short period of time. Now, if you're doing this overnight, obviously not room temperature, you would want to refrigerate it because it will not be good for the chicken or for you if you do it at uh, room temperature for 12 hours. That's not, not a good idea. So you've got to get your hands in there and get your hands messy and you're going to end up with yellow fingers because of the turmeric in there, okay? But that's okay. So really give it a, <coughs> a good squish around. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put this to one side and then every sort of 10, 15 minutes, <coughs> excuse me, I want you to get your fingers in there and give it a turnover again. <coughs> oh, dear me. A tickle. Um, so that we can get this as marinated as we can in the time that we have, all right? So it should look nice and yellow. You may wanna give your hands a rinse. I'm gonna pop mine right over here so I can do it every time I go to the sink. <coughs> I'll give my hands a wash. And I'm gonna wipe down my countertop of that raw chicken. And I hope you all got, you all made your roti bread. I didn't actually make mine until this afternoon. I didn't make it last night, I forgot, but um, at least it sat in the fridge and I'm gonna bring it out in a minute, so. So that's our first um, little thing. And again, ideally, if you can leave it overnight, all the better. If not, um, you know, you leave it just as long as, as long as you can, okay? All right, get me back on screen. Um, and again, you could, as I say, better to do it in something non-metal because sometimes when it sits in the marinade, it absorbs the flavor of the metal a bit, which you really don't want to, don't want to happen, okay? All right, so we are gonna be jumping around a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do now is um, the batter for the appam balik, balik. My Malaysian is not very good, as you can tell. The appam balik, all right? These are a uh, crispy, fluffy Asian type pancake, um, which is filled, our recipe is filled with roasted peanuts and a little bit of creamy sweet corn um, and, um, and or sweet corn. I've got some sweet corn I'm gonna put in mine as well, perhaps, or just, the, um, or just the peanuts, which I have on the recipe, but you can put sweet corn in it as well. Um, and then some butter and then fold it in half and uh, very much the sort of breakfast, type tea uh, dish that, um, that is used. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So for that, and again, bear in mind, we are doing small, um, small amounts here because you know, we don't be really making loads and loads of these. So um, ideally um, electric mixer, hand mixer, or um, a KitchenAid mixer works best for this. Our ingredients, we have three quarters of a cup of flour, I have all my dry ingredients together in here. A quarter teaspoon of baking powder, a tablespoon of sugar, a third of a teaspoon of baking soda, pinch of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of um, dry G uh, vanilla, sorry, dry juice, and then vanilla, which I didn't get out. Ah, didn't get my vanilla out. 
Um, the dry ingredients are all going to go in the bowl of your bowl that you're going to mix in. And I say either in an electric mixer, I'm going to use my electric mixer down here. And I'm going to put those dry ingredients, not the, obviously not the filling ingredients, all right? So my regular dry ingredients are going in there. And I'm going to use, what did I do with my? I'm going to have to. <laughs> and I'm using the flat beater for this, all right, this thing. If you're using an electric mixer, you don't want to use a dough hook or anything for this, okay? All right, so I'm just putting that on to let those combine, just to mix, mix together. So the interesting thing here, we have three sort of rising agents in here. We have well, baking powder too, baking powder and soda, and then also the yeast, which is going to help this, this, these pancakes puff up a little bit. All right. So we are going to, I have half an egg here. This is left over from my, when I made my roti. And I'm going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla. This is just a half teaspoon. So I'm going to do two of these. One. Two. So this is going to give it a little bit of a little bit of sweetness, I suppose. And then our milk. Now, with your milk, you want to warm it. Now, it doesn't want to be, it cannot be more than 120 degrees. All right. Because it will kill the yeast. <clears throat> so if you want to use, I'm actually not going to use one. If you want to use a thermometer to check that, you can. Uh, if you're going to do it in your microwave, I would do it. Um, maybe initially for 20 seconds and then see what the temperature is and then do it in 10 second increments because otherwise it will get too hot and then that will kill the yeast, all right? This is going to be a batter like a sort of thick pancake batter, okay? Yeah, mine's just about warming up. I can tell mine's probably just about 100, I would think. It's better for it to be slightly cold than to be too warm. If it's too warm, it kills the yeast. If it's too cold, it just takes a little longer to work, which we don't have to worry about too much with this. So with your machine running, add your milk and add the vanilla and the egg, the half egg and the vanilla, all right? All together. Now, if you're doing it in the mixer, um, it's quite likely that um, you may get some clumping on the bottom because it's a fairly small amount and the, therefore the dough blade's not quite reaching to the bottom. So you may need to make sure that you get that fully incorporated from underneath. I can smell the vanilla even though it's only a small amount. So you want to make sure there's no lumps, all right? And then um, you're going to put your mixture in the fridge to let it cool. Any batter um, which has any time flour has anything added to it, which makes it a liquid or a batter or a dough, um, you really are much better to let the mixture rest in between because that allows the mixture to relax. Um, when you add liquid to flour, and make sure you've really got that mixed at the bottom. When you add liquid to flour, you just start the development of gluten. And gluten, if it's not allowed to relax and chill out in the fridge, um, does tend to shrink. And it also tends to make your, in this case, your pancakes um, tough. All right, so any pancake batter, it's much better to make it ahead of time and let it rest in the fridge in advance. All right, so just, you can cover it or not. It doesn't really matter for the short period of time it's going to be in the fridge. And then I can put this away. I have a lovely appliance garage down here, which is great. And I can put this, put this away. Now, 
I do want to just um, talk to you about the ghee. Now you can buy ghee. I saw, I actually was in Walmart the other day and I saw three different brands of ghee, which is great. What ghee is, it's what's known in French cooking as clarified butter. And basically it's butter with the milk solids taken out. Now in a lot of um, Asian countries, um, and including India and stuff like that, places like Malaysia, for religious reasons, they remove the milk solids from the from the butter because of not mix, mil, mixing dairy and meat together. Okay, uh, and if you take the milk solids out, you're taking the dairy out of the butter. The advantage of um, clarified butter is when you take the milk solids out, your butter. Uh, if you use it to cook with, to saute with, or something like that, it doesn't burn because it's the milk solids that goes little black bits in the bottom. So it's used in French cooking when you're cooking with high heat and you want the flavor of butter, but you don't want those little black bits floating around. How you make it, you take a stick of butter, cut it up into pieces, allow it to melt over a very gentle heat, just till it melts, no more. Turn it off, let it sit for about five minutes, and then you will see it's got like a, scum is a nasty word, but it isn't really, it's got like a film on the top. You gently remove that. And then what you do, and I'm gonna show, cause I've taken some of mine out to do my, <clears throat> make my what's the name just now. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna tip it um, to one side and you pour it off and the milk solids sit in the bottom. All right, so um, my butter is melted get the right angle so you can see it all right my butter is melted there now as I that's better as I pour this off the more you pour off the easier it will be to see the white stuff in the box so you pour off as much of this as you can you usually lose about 20 percent roughly and then you discard that and that is ghee Okay, we'll clarify butter. Come on, get a little bit more of the edge there. Ooh, tiny bit, there we go. All right, and this is what we can use now for our, for our ghee. All right. So we'll come back to that um, in a little bit because with the filling, we're going to use this ghee because we're going to use it to um, cook the pancakes, which are going to be over a fairly, a fairly high heat. Okay, so that is the purpose of those. All right, so I'm going to pop this to one side. So um, now what we're going to do is we are going to move on to another dish, just keeping you guys hopping. Um, we are going to move on to the dish with the anchovies. <coughs> and um, I have white anchovies that I, they were dried ones, which I've soaked. And uh, I'm going to use those um, tonight. I have them over here soaking. I do have to I'll show you these. Here they are. They've still got little heads on. I've got to take the heads off. But um, they're not as soft as I'd like. But I, I, I got these. Um, if any of you live near Wash, sorry, Robinson, um, there's a new place there called the International Market. And they have all sorts of sort of um, Asian and uh, a Middle East products and stuff. And it's really kind of cool. And I got those there thinking, oh, great. I, that'd be good too, because I can, they were dried and they're a bag. And I thought, oh, they'll last for ages. So these are the white ones. You can use the regular anchovies. The nice thing about this by soaking, I mean, I soak these in um, hot water. So they are not, they're not going to be as salty as, um, and or obviously as oily as the ones that come in the cans. Okay. So, um, Take some of those off. So I have those. And I'm going to give them a whirl. I haven't used these particular ones before, so they'll see how they how they work out. I'm not quite sure how many I need. It's probably going to be enough, actually. I've probably done way too many here. So I'm going to pop those to one side. Um, okay. But if you have just the regular canned ones, that's fine. But what I suggest you do is soak them in some water to get some of the oil out, out of them, all right? Because they are gonna be pretty, pretty oily. 
Um, so this dish, um, we're going to make, we're going to cook completely. All right. You will probably need to reheat the stuff uh, before you serve it over your rice and stuff. But I thought we'd just go through and, and cook, the, cook the whole thing. Um, so it's not so as confusing. All right. So I have um, coconut milk in here. Um, I need a bit of water to go with that. Um, some ground ginger and regular ginger. <coughs> My long grain rice. And those are serving for the rice. And then for the garnish, we're going to boil an egg and uh, we're going to cut up some cucumber. And then we have our anchovies and stuff, and we're going to cook those as well. And then the sauce we're going to do separately. So we're going to start with the rice. So um, in a medium sized saucepan, okay, um, we're going to add the coconut milk. And I have to measure this out. Let's so get out my freezer. So for about um, half, a cup, half a cup of long grain rice, you want about half a cup of coconut milk. A bit more, there we go. And I need some water, half a cup of water. Now my rice, I haven't done this, but I want you, if you haven't done this already, you should um, strain your rice and soak it with running water in a strainer to get some of the starch out of it, okay? Maybe for about 30 seconds under running water. And then give it a good shake. And that will take some of the starch out of it and, um, you know, prevent it from uh, getting too, too clumpy. All right. So we're going to add to this the ground ginger. And we're going to chop up the fresh ginger now with the fresh ginger. Fresh ginger comes like this. It's got a skin on the outside. Easiest way to remove that skin is with a teaspoon. Just take the teaspoon and scrape the skin off. Now I've got a bit more here than I need. I just grabbed the piece that I had. Mm, smells great. And I'm gonna dice this up, okay? I do my life. There it is. <laughs> You can grate this, but it's really hard to grate, to get it through the grater, I think. So I usually just chop it up in a few pieces, turn it the other way, do the same thing, and then cut it as, mince it as small as I can. I do apologize for some reason I'm missing a bay leaf off that rice instructions. If you have a bay leaf, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. All right, so water, coconut milk, ginger, fresh ginger, <coughs> my bay leaf, and a big pinch of salt. Okay. So we are going to bring it to a boil. I'll add the rice to it, sorry, as well. Add the, add the rice and bring it to a boil. So we're going to bring it to a boil and then we're going to cover it, turn the heat down to really low and let it cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. Probably closer to 20 with the amount we have um, will be enough. All right. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure you've got a lid close at hand to put on the top um, that's a tight fitting, a tight fitting lid. No, nope, that's not gonna work. <laughs> no, wait, okay. so, yeah, perfect. 
So just keep an eye on it because it'll probably boil pretty quickly, okay? All right, so let's move on to um, the garnish. Let's cook the egg. So what I want you to do is to take your egg. We're doing a boiled egg, all right? Put your egg in a pan, cover it with enough cold water so it covers it by about one inch, all right? Put this on a high heat. And then once it comes to a boil, we're gonna turn it off, cover it and leave it for um, about 12 minutes. All right, that's the best way to do a hard boiled egg because then you don't get that black ring around the outside, okay? So we're just gonna cook it like we're doing hard boiled egg. And then, um, make a bit more room here. And my rice is nearly boiling, okay. Um, so for the, uh, the garnish, um, we're going to do that bit next, all right? So you want to use a wok or another skillet, but let's just, um, once your rice comes to a boil, which mine has, turn it down to really low and pop your lid on. And you may want to set a timer. I'm going to mess 20 minutes for that. Oh, no, sorry. There we go. What am I doing? There we go. <laughs> Put the microwave on instead of the timer. So uh, 20 minutes on that. You want to stir it periodically so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Okay. All right. So keep an eye on your egg. As I said, once it comes to a boil, you will want another lid for that. And uh, we're going to leave it for about 12 minutes once it comes to a boil. All right. So the other ingredients for the sauce. We have um, a quarter of a cucumber, some oil, peanuts, half of your anchovies. Um, as, then we're going to do that. And then we're going to make the sauce afterwards. All right. So in your skillet or what you're going to, well, if you want to heat about a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil and add the peanuts, we're going to cook those briefly until lightly brown and take them out with a slotted spoon. Put them on some paper towel to absorb the grease. Put the skillet back on, add the first half of your anchovies, cook briefly, turning into a crisp, take them out with a slotted spoon, discard the oil and wipe out your skillet. All right. Um, so those are our garnish that are gonna go on the top. All right. So I have a lovely cute little skillet here that I'm gonna use. And I just have to grab some oil and get enough oil. So about a quarter cup of oil, roughly. You don't have to measure it, really. You can just pop it in. It's not going to be used for anything going forward. All right. Obviously, when they're doing this, the street vendors would have all this stuff already made, I should imagine. And they'd just be, and have the rice made, they'd just be making the sauce and heating the sauce up. So it should be a little easier <laughs> for them. Remember to um, move your chicken around. Mine's looking lovely and yellow, which is great. So just make sure your oil's sort of medium hot, okay? Um, and you want um, some paper towel laid out. I'm just gonna wipe this off. Um, lay my paper towel on here. There we go. All right, looks like we're warming up here. So I'm putting in my peanuts. Oops. 
I'm going to let those cook for a couple of minutes. And you want a solid spoon to get them out. There we go. I just want a little bit of colour on them. And if you want to check them, see how brown they are, lift them out. We're not quite brown yet, but you can always just lift them up and check them, okay? I'm going to use my foam timer for my egg. Give your rice a little stir, guys, okay? Pop your lid back on. That rice is wonderful. Just even on its own, it's really great, I think. All right, let's see how these are. Yeah, mine are fairly toasty. A little bit of color on, we don't want to burn them. So make sure you get them all out. Pop them on there. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to put in half of my anchovies. About that many, I suppose. I'll put those. And these will cook pretty quick. Yeah. Mine already crispy, all right? So it's basically in and out. So we're gonna discard this oil. Okay, my water is at a boil for my egg, so I'm gonna turn it off, put the lid on, and I'm gonna use my phone as my timer. <laughs> I've only got one timer, well, I've got timer on the oven, but I'm gonna use this, I think. Uh, I'll timer. All right, so I said we're gonna do 12 minutes. There we go, great. All right, find something to put your oil in and tip it out and you can throw it away when it's cold and then just wipe out your skillet with a um, piece of paper towel. Be careful, cause it's gonna be hot. <laughs> this little wok is great. I think somebody gave it to me as a gift, I love it. All right, so um, those can get cold right there. Yeah, my anchovies are nice and crisp. Mm, great. Well, I'm going to pop those back here like that. Now, with our cucumber, let's do that first. So with the cucumber, basically we're going to peel it um, and slice it up, okay? And it's going to be used um, kind of just as it is. So I'm going to take a little piece of my cucumber like this. And I'm going to peel it. And get rid of the skin. Obviously, I'm peeling it. <laughs> now, you can do um, whatever you like with this. You can cut it into little julienne strips. Or you can um, you could you could shred it with a grater too, but I'm going to cut mine in half first like this, and I'm going to scoop out the seeds from the middle, um, which I usually do. I just take a melon baller. You can use a knife as well, but if you put a melon baller in, just go like that. It pulls them right out. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut little, I'm going to cut slices like this, and then 
what I'm going to do then is just cut these into like matchstick length pieces, okay? You can do one or two on top of each other, whatever you want to do. Probably, well, I'll do the other half as well. And this will just go on, this just goes on cold, okay? And those can just sit to one side in a little bowl. Use one of these. So they're going to be that garnish. Okay. All right. My rice and other stir. Yeah, my rice is almost done, I think. See, mm, not quite. I'm going to put a drop of water in here because the water is all absorbed, and my rice is still a little sticky on the bottom. Look at that, I'm going to drop more coconut milk actually. So I'm going to let it cook. You know, if it does dry out before it's fully cooked, then add water and or milk or or coconut milk. All right. Um, I think mine needs definitely needs a couple more minutes. And I also want to add a little bit pinch more salt. There we go. Don't want to over salt it, but if you want more salt, you can always add that at the end or add it now. All right, so it's almost, it's getting there, it's getting there, okay? So for our um, dish here now, what we have is, um, We've done the coconut oil rice. We've got the garnish made. So now the sauce for this, we are going to slice some onion, mince a garlic, thinly slice um, a shallot. If you've done that already, that's great. And then we have our extra anchovies and we have a bit of salt, some sugar and tamarind juice or lemon juice, either one. Any citrus, uh, particularly limes or... Um, Lemon juice is a fine substitute for tamarind. You can get tamarind in many different forms. Um, I actually have it, the paste comes in, it's the easiest to use, it comes in containers like this. Okay. Um, the whole tamarind, I did have some, they're like dried pea pods, they look like. If I have a look, they can see if I've still got some. Um, they have to be soaked and then split and squeezed out and it's a little tedious and you can also buy um tamarind comes in like a paste a very like dense paste it looks it looks like but it's really you have to soak that in water then push it through a strainer so the the um concentrate like this is the easiest to use for sure all right and i have i have some of that measured out already so for our sauce, what we're going to do, we're going to heat our vegetable oil, we're going to add our onions, garlic, and shallots, cook those for one to two minutes. Then we're going to add our chili paste and cook that for about 10 minutes until the veggies are all soft. And then um, if it dries out a bit, again, we're going to add a little bit of water to that. And then we're going to stir in the rest of the anchovies um, and cook for about five minutes. Stirring, and then we stir in sugar, salt, and tamarind juice and simmer until it's thick for about five minutes. And we can turn it off and then just reheat it. Okay, when we're ready, ready to serve it. All right. Um, so for for my um, onion, I have my onion here. Let me going to move these guys over here a little bit. Okay, so I have a quarter medium onion here. As I say, when we do these small amounts in these classes, we have sort of weird, weird amounts of stuff because we're doing this a small, normally we'd be doing this to feed six or eight people. So we'd have like a whole onion or something like that. But um, obviously we're just doing a little, a little bit. So thinly slice your onion, cut your piece off the end and then just very thinly slice it. OK, 
okay and then uh clover garlic you're going to um thinly slice that as well sorry dice this what am i talking about dice it, yeah it's garlic i have a huge clove of garlic here it's a good job we like garlic this is like three garlic cloves but that's okay <laughs> and we're going to mince this up now we mince this the same way that i was just doing the um i did the ginger just now so just cut it into some pieces cut it the other way roughly and then mince so use the flat of your hand on the front of your knife and rotate the back of the knife backwards and forwards over your garlic until it's really nice and small. I so say we are using shallots with these recipes, but you can always use just more garlic and uh, more um, onion if you don't have shallots. They're just slightly sweeter than shallots than onions. Um, but really and honestly, uh, you could use just all onions if you wanted to. So make sure you get that garlic really, really small because nobody wants to get a big mouthful of garlic, however much you like it. Gosh, that's huge, that garlic clove. All right, and then with our shallot, we're gonna thinly slice that as well. I have, very often shallots have two parts inside, this one does. Um, I'm just gonna go with this half, I think it will be plenty because it's pretty big. And we're going to take the skin off, same way as we did the onions, and then just thinly slice it. Whoop. Okay, Woo. there we go. All right, so thin slices. Go and what we want to do, you can use your same skillet. You're going to heat a little extra bit of oil, heat that up, and once that gets warm, we will add those three ingredients. All right, I'm going to check my rice again because I'm thinking it's probably pretty much done. Let me grab a spoon and see how it is. Yes, it's perfect. Okay. I'm going to turn it off, push it off the burner, and um, I can reheat it later if I need to. Okay. Okay. I've got a bit of warmth under there now. So these three guys are going to go in. My shallot, my garlic, my onion. Grab a spoon. Don't have your heat too high because you don't want to burn that garlic. So medium high is good. All right, so about a minute or two, I'm gonna give that like another 30 seconds and then I'm gonna add my chili paste. Got on the wrong tray here. So the amount of chili paste you add is up to you. You can add a bit more. Depends on how hot your chili paste is. Now, mix that in and then turn your heat down to low. I'm going to let that cook a little bit. Now, your egg, mine, that was time on egg. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to drain it and then I'm going to cover this with cold water because it's much easier to peel a 
egg if it's cold. So just cover it with cold water and leave it, all right? Let it just sit on one side and then it'll be ready for us. All right, so um, the onions, um, about five minutes, and then we're going to add the salt, sugar, and tamarind juice, and simmer it until the sauce is, is thick, all right? So I have, I guess I had the, the wrong one over here. This is the one with the sugar in, yes. I have the wrong one. There we go. Um, and I'm going to, in about five minutes, I'm going to put that in. All right. Let's just look at what we're going to do next. I know with time is marching on a pace. All right. Um, all right. I want to come back now um, and just look at the uh, peanut sauce. So leave your onions for about five minutes and look at the peanut sauce for the chicken. All right. So for the peanut sauce, we have um, a quarter cup of peanuts, a clove of garlic, a shallot, small shallot. So I'm going to use this half the shallot or I've got here. A dried red chili. Um, that was my rice timer. Part, a third of a stalk of lemongrass, a piece of galanga. Galanga and Laos are the same thing. This is galanga. It looks like ginger. Now I buy this and it smells gingery but more flowery. I buy this, you can buy it frozen in places like Lotus on the strip and you can keep it in the freezer, take pieces out, which is the best way to buy it because it's kind of hard to buy it fresh and it will go bad like ginger will. Um, but you can use Laos powder, Galanga powder. Galanga powder, uh, if you get it from, whoops, oh, very good, throwing everything all over the place. Um, it comes in, if you get it in Lotus, it comes in a container like this, it calls itself Galanga ginger powder, but that's what the powder is. All right, so you can use either or. All right, so um, what I'm going to do with this, as I've got my galanga, I'm going to peel this piece and I'm going to, this is going to be chopped up just the same way, although you can't peel it off with a, um, a spoon like you can with the other. Uh, but I'm going to mince it up just like I minced up the um, the ginger, the fresh ginger. The skin on this is really tough to get off. You have to really, particularly when the stuff's being frozen. So. But you can use, as I say, you can use the Laos powder if you want. And it's a little it's hard to chop up this. So for the sauce, we are going to put the peanuts in your food processor and um, chop them up until they're sandy. Take them out and then we're going to add the uh, garlic, the shallot, the dried chilies, the lemongrass, the galango, the oil and blend that together. All right. So you will need your food processor again, your mixer, food processor, whatever, your blender on me. All right, so put this on, get the blade, throw your peanuts in and make those crumble. So really ground like that, okay? They can go back in your little bowl. All right, so in to your food processor now is going to go my galanga, a second, my Clove of garlic, my shallot, um, 
one large dry chili. If you want, you don't have to put the chili in. What else? What am I missing? Lemongrass. About another third of lemongrass. Again, cut that in a few pieces. We'll make it easier to break up. And um, a little bit of oil. So about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. All right. And get this as smooth as you can, all right? Not bad, but I'm gonna add a tiny bit more oil to this because it's a little, um, I wanna try and make it a bit more pasty. So I'm gonna push it down with a spatula and see if I can get a bit more of a paste going there. Actually, I've got another idea. <laughs> I've, I also, I often use this. I have a coffee grinder, which I use just for spices. Um, it's like the brawn, the good old fashioned brawn um, coffee grinder. And um, I'm gonna put this in here because this does work pretty, pretty darn good, particularly for dry things. I'm hoping it's gonna do it for this, it should do. Oh yeah, that looks much better. Okay. All right, I know we're jumping around here. Let's just go back to our other sauce. This is our onions, garlic, and um, galanga. Uh, onion, sorry, onion, garlic, and shallot. I beg your pardon, I'm getting confused. Put your remaining um, anchovies in it, all right? And we're gonna let that cook for a couple of minutes. So we're gonna let those cook for about five minutes and then we're gonna add some salt, sugar and tamarind juice. Okay, all right, let's see where we are here. Let me move, okay, so I've gotta make sure I got this, it's for this. I'm getting confused now as well. <laughs> Not really. All right, push that back. These are for that, don't need this, don't need this. All right, so let's just let's just stay with our anchovies for the minute because I don't want to confuse you guys, okay? Um, so we have the anchovies in. I think they've cooked long enough. What we need to add now is um, your tamarind juice, <clears throat> uh, one and a third tablespoons of tamarind juice. Salt. and about three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar. Three quarters of a tablespoon of sugar, sorry. Um, and then, um, let's say a pinch of salt.
So that should be everything we have in there. And we just want to let this simmer till it's thick. It'll get thick pretty quickly as we have a small amount, okay? So what I suggest you do is stir it around, turn it off, push it to the back of your stove because you're going to reheat it when you go to eat it. All right, so that is our onions, shallots and garlic with the uh, anchovies added and then the tamarind, the sugar and salt added to it, mixed together and then we push it to the back, okay? All right, so <clears throat> let's go back to the peanut sauce for the uh, chicken, all right? So we have all our spices mixed together. We have our ground up peanuts right here, okay? So what we're gonna do, um, and I also, sorry, um, in here, I have my tamarind, brown sugar, water, soy, and salt. And I have it all mixed together in this little container right here, all right? Um, if you have lumpy tamarind paste, you may need to give it a stir. Mine was pretty smooth because it was that concentrate. But if you're actually using the paste, you may have to squeeze those pieces out or strain them out, all right? Okay, so. What we're gonna do now is, so we're on, just for your interest, we're on step five. <laughs> so we've done that. We're gonna transfer the garlic spice paste to a saucepan. That's the stuff from your blender. And we're gonna cook that over medium high heat for about five minutes. All right. So um, let me use this. So all of that in. And there's oil in it. So we don't need to, um, add more oil. Yeah, this little guy works. This is the sort of things you pick up in thrift stores. I think that's where I got this one actually. So I've had one of my own and then I bought another one. Um, it was like the in thing to have back in the eighties was a brawn coffee grinder, whether you have coffee to grind or not. <laughs> all right, that's all within. I'm gonna heat that up. and let that, let that cook for a little while. All right, I'm gonna clear up some of my mess here. And then, um, and then we're gonna let that cook for about five minutes. All right, and it will get sort of aromatic. And then we're gonna add those crushed up peanuts and your tamarind liquid, all right? Which should have your soy, water, and brown sugar and salt in there as well. All right, all mixed together. So let that cook and let it get nice, nice and brown. All right. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way. I think we're going to run over time wise a little bit, guys, but we've done the hard stuff. <laughs> we just got to do the uh, pancakes and the roti now, which is kind of fun. So let this, and again, it may not take quite five minutes because we've got a relatively small amount, but just till it gets brown, okay? Not burnt, just brown. I have mine turned up a little bit higher, just turned it down. And it should get nice and aromatic, okay? And what I've worked out on doing next. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. All right, so take a few minutes, but you're going to. You should be able to really smell it. It should smell really good, okay?
Okay. I have, hopefully you guys can see that, a bit of color on there, okay? I'll leave it for like 30 more seconds and then I'm going to <clears throat> add the other stuff. All right. Um, so I'm putting my peanuts in. Oops, get them all in there. And then your tamarind liquid with your brown sugar and the soy and water in there. Make sure you get it all out in there. So this should be like, still still be fairly um, fairly pasty guys, okay? It's not gonna be liquidy. And we're gonna let that just boil a little bit and then turn it off. And you wanna just taste the correct seasoning, just taste it, see what it tastes like. Do you think it tastes good? Then it's good. All right, while that's cooking, get your roti dough out of your fridge. This is the stuff you made earlier, for unless if it's already out, I actually left mine in, but if it's in the fridge, bring it out. And then you will need some extra, um, you'll, need, you'll need your ghee and some extra flour. Mm. Well, that tastes great. So turn that mixture off and let it sit. Okay, just put it to one side. And that's ready and we can put it all together, heat it up when we're ready to eat it. All right. Okay, so we are going to do um, the roti now. I divided mine into four balls. I coated each ball with a little bit of the ghee that I made earlier. Um, and what we're gonna do now, we are going to, if you look at step three, uh, clean, clean surface, spread about two tablespoons of the ghee onto a 12 inch circle. Coat your hands with some of the ghee also. Now, if your ghee has solidified, you may wanna stick in the microwave to let it get runny again. Put one dough ball in the center of the, <clears throat> of the butter and you are going to flatten it out and then we're going to pull it and stretch it and try and make it about a foot in circumference all right and then um we're going to lift up one side fold it into the middle so we're going to take the four corners and lift them into the middle and then we cook them in a large saute pan over a low heat and just a little extra ghee on the top and cook them for about three or four minutes on each side all right um, what you're going to do, so what I want you to do is get a big skillet, okay, so with your ghee, where did I put my ghee, here it is, yeah, mine has solidified a bit, so I'm going to pop it in the microwave just to, um, just to Get it runny again. Oh. Now, whatever pan you're using, put it on a fairly low heat. Um, to start warming it up. So it means that we can put the roti in there when they're, uh, when they're done, uh, when they're sh shaped, okay? Yeah. Colder in here than I thought. 
So this dough should be slightly sticky, but sort of pliable, all right? It shouldn't be really sticking to your hands. Also, don't forget there's that butter on there, so that will definitely help anyway. All right, so, okay. So a little bit of your butter on your work surface, okay? And then spread it out. You can use your hand or a pastry brush. It's up to you. This kind of sort of things kids would love to do, isn't it? This. <laughs> Make a big mess. All right, so I'm flattening this out with my hand. You could use a rolling pin, but it's a little sticky to use on a rolling pin with a rolling pin. And then you're going to just start pulling it out. Do it from the center outwards, OK? Now we're aiming for something like a circle. Let me put my camera on the overhead so you can see. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. It's easier for you to watch me from there. Don't let your pan get too hot. Here we go. Where am I? There I am. Oops, what's going on? All right, so here's my dough, all right? It's not a circle at the moment, but hopefully it will be. So work from the inside. Oh, that was clever. There was a bit of anchovy stuck to the bottom. <laughs> It must have come off the chopping board. Oh, well, I'm going to have an anchovy flavored one. So pull it from, can you see how it's, it's like I'm pulling, I'm letting it drop from the inside, a bit like if you're good at spinning pizza dough, which I am not. Um, it's kind of what you would, what you would do. But you want to try and see if you can get your dough. And that's why if you hold it up to the light, you should have a fairly even thickness. And you can see that by looking at the dough as to what what thickness you know where the thick parts are is what i'm trying to say and it's very pliable there so it'll stretch and you may get a wee hole in it but don't worry about it too much this is a a flat bread i mean it isn't completely unleavened because we do have the yeast in there but it's you know it's like another bread form like we get all over the world different bread forms Naans and rotis of different types, Indian roti, and you get paranthas and um, oh, all sorts of different chapat. Uh, oh gosh, it's gone. Something else I was thinking of. All right, so mine's a funny shape, but that's okay. So then I'm going to fold the four corners, fold into four like this, and like that. All right, and then I'm going to brush it with a little bit more of this. This is the fun part of class because we make a big mess. And then it's going to go into um, into my pan. All right. And I'm going to put it in there like that. And let it cook a little bit more oil in there. And let it cook and then I'll do my do my next one. Um, as it's so cold, my stuff is because I've got a um, marble you know granite countertop here so of course the stuff is going cold as i um as i put it on because it's the granite's cold but never mind so you always want to try and work from the inside get the inside thin then gradually come out further and further as i say if i was good at spinning pizza dough it might be easier but i'm not I'm not very good at doing that at all so we're going to cook these for about three to four minutes on each side till they're nice and brown, then turn them over. Why they're made like this, and why, well, they're folded, it'll help give it some, um, uh, a bit of fluffiness and stuff, but it's kind of an interesting way of making them. It's, you see so many different ways of doing stuff like this, it's really strange. And I can see this one's thicker in, in the middle there. So I'm just going to keep thinning it out as much as I can. As I say, if you get a little hole, don't worry about it because that's going to be covered up when you fold it up anyway. It's amazing how flexible this stuff is, how um, how stretchy it is. 
And usually I finish it by putting it on the table because then you can see the thick bits on the edge. And I have got a couple of little holes, but as I say, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna fold this side in, this one, this one, and this one. So they like meat in the middle. Let me get a spatula. See how this is doing, it's probably, no, it's not there yet. It wasn't quite hot enough. All right, put that one to one side. All right, I am just gonna I am just gonna cook two of these now um, because I do want us to just move on and finish um, cooking the chicken. So put your oven, put your broiler on. And um, let's um, do the cook the chicken, okay? So with your chicken, um, I'm just watching that because it wasn't quite as hot as I wanted. You're going to take a skewer, thread it through, kind of spread it out if it's a big piece like that. And I'm doing it on a um, on my broiler pan, which I have foil on, and I'm going to spray this so the chicken doesn't stick. All right, I'm just gonna spray it all over like that so it doesn't stick. And then you wanna lay these on here. Now, if you have small, a couple of small pieces, like I've got this small piece right here, then I'm gonna put two pieces on one stick. All right, find another end piece, there's one. Um, and do it like that. And just to say, spread them out, thread them down, but make sure that they're fairly open Otherwise, they won't they won't cook properly. All right. My yeah, I didn't heat that up enough. It's because this that particular um, sauté pan that I put the um, roti in is um, a very heavy duty cast iron Le Creuset, and it takes ages to heat up. And I wasn't thinking, so that's why it hasn't. All right, you can do them like this, two, two levels, um, you know, whatever, just don't have them too close to each other um, because um, you want to make sure they cook properly. All right, so like that. And then I'm going to put them on until they're lightly brown on one side and then lightly brown on the other side. All right. Uh, I definitely didn't heat my roti pan enough. <laughs> um, all right. I know I'm rushing here, but again, I just don't want to keep you guys too long. I know we, I don't I don't mind running over, but I just don't want to be over too much. Um, let's just get this. In fact, I'm going to put the other one in next to it, I think. Because I can get that in. There we go. That's a bit better. That first one. Oh, yeah. So I'm turning the first one over. It's nice and golden on one side. I'll show you guys. You see? So I'm going to turn it over. And I will do the rest of those a bit later. Um, okay. Final thing we have to do is... Um, our pancakes. Now, with your pancake mixture, you do want to stir it up a bit when you take it out. All right, you give it a good stir like that. So, so these are eaten for breakfast or even at dinner time. Like we eat pancakes here. Um, Similar sort of idea and obviously different fillings in it. Um, you can, I have made these with the um, cream coconut in them. Oh, sorry, cream corn, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I just thought we'd do them with um, sugar and um, peanuts today, tonight. So um, how are we going to do this? You want another skillet. 
I'm keeping you hopping here, guys, aren't I? I'm going to move this roasty one over here a little bit. Ah, it's heavy and hot. Excuse me. Um, now you can make these any size you want. I'm going to turn my um, overhead round so you guys can see me cooking these. <coughs> um, and I assume like anything else, you can put anything you like in these really, but this is a sugar and peanuts are um, very, uh, very common to be put in there. Just you literally sprinkle some sugar on, dot with butter and uh, put the, um, the peanuts in. And then we cover it and then let them cook a little bit longer. So they actually cooked on top of the, of the pan of the uh, pancake. So put a little bit of your clarified butter in your pan, spread it around, let that get nice and hot, okay? And then what we're going to do, we're gonna pour the pancake batter mixture in. Um, about two thirds of a cup, you want to sort of, fairly big pancakes, you can make small ones if you want, but, um, it's up to you. We're going to swirl it around so the batter is even and then um, cover with a lid and cook for two to three minutes until we get some bubbles. All right. So if you hopefully you've got a big enough lid, you could always use a piece of foil if you don't have a big enough lid to um, to cover your to cover your skillet. This one will be. Yeah, that will work fine. OK, my roti are coming along. Pretty good. Let's see. Turn that one over. Yeah, second one's a bit better. The first one, a bit flat. All right, I'm gonna cover this with something because I'm not gonna try and clean all that off now because I want to put the food out. So I'm just gonna cover that, cover the, my greasy mess over there. So you want to see on your pan? You want to see some bubbles from your um, butter? Okay before you uh, put your pancake batter in. And if you're not sure if it's hot enough, Stick your finger in your batter and go like that. And if it doesn't sizzle straight away, which mine didn't, it's not quite hot enough. All right, my one roti is done. Took longer than it should have done because my pan wasn't quite hot enough, all right? All right, let's see. Yeah, pretty much there. All right, so I'm gonna pour some of my batter in like that. I'm gonna swirl it around my pan to make it fairly thin. Okay. And then I'm gonna, once it's settled, put my lid on, leave it for about two or three minutes till we get like a skin, uh, sorry, bubbles on the surface. And my other roti is now done. And I'm gonna put those out here for you guys to see in a minute when I turn the, the thing around, okay? Don't forget your chicken. Mine's getting there, not yet.
All right, while this is cooking, I am going to plate the rice dish just to show you. I'm not going to heat it back up again because I'm probably going to reheat it to eat it, but I'm going to plate it so um, you guys can see it. Um, how we do this. And I'll explain to you in a second what, what I've done. All right, can you see I have bubbles? I have bubbles on the surface. So now I'm going to sprinkle about a tablespoon of sugar on and a handful of peanuts. I'm going to press in there gently. I can do it like this. There we go. Then put the lid back on. And let that cook for a couple more minutes. There we go. Chicken. Oh. So once your chicken is brown, brown, lightly brown on one side, turn it over finish cooking it on the other side, which again should take three, four, maybe five minutes. The color is amazing on these. I think they look fantastic. That lovely turmeric is amazing stuff. The plate. <clears throat> okay, that's my one pancake. Uh, I'm going to do one more. Drop more ghee in there. So I'm swirling it around. Put my lid on. Okay. All right. Got some bubbles going already. My sugar. My peanuts. Lid back on. All right. Okay, I'm going to turn this back round. So I currently have my cup of my roti right here. Um, this is our rice, our coconut rice with our anchovies and our sauce and the paste on the top and cucumber. This is my first pancake as balik. 
Um, little, a little crispy on the outside, but what the heck. <laughs> and then we're just waiting for the second one to come out, and we're just we're now waiting for the um for the chicken. All right, two more minutes on the chicken. While we're waiting for that, does anyone have any questions, complaints, concerns, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Um, I would love to hear it. I would love to see pictures. If you've got pictures, you can show me what you've made. Probably easier for me to look at my little camera. <laughs> and um, we're pretty much done. So I'm just going to wait to get that chicken out so you guys can see that. Your hard-boiled egg. It goes with, um, excuse me, with your, uh, ah, with your rice. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you just want to peel it and slice it or dice it, it's up to you. And it goes with the rice. Thank you. I would have, I would have gone to the sink later and gone, ah, my egg. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a bit of egg on. Easy for me to forget something. <laughs> right, let's see. Yeah. There we go. So you could cut it into small pieces if you wanted to. I'm just gonna put some slices on the top like, like that. And then get my chicken out. <clears throat> Looking good. All right. This looks nice. I think this is hot. Get that down. There we go. I just think the color of this is so great. As I love the color of the color of tamarind, um, turmeric. Excuse me. <coughs> and then um, this. So I put my egg on there. Let me get my other pancake out. Flip him over. Oh, that one looks better. The second one is better. There we go. It's a lot nicer. Um, let me just do this, get a little container to put this in, and we'll be good. All right, so, uh, gosh, there it is. So I'm putting this, um, that's the stuff for the chicken with our peanuts and stuff in there. And that's going to go right on there. And there we have everything. So hopefully you can see. So there's my pancakes right here. Um, coconut rice with all the fixings. The roti right here. I'm going to do the rest of those. And then the beautiful chicken. Now, this, if your mixture is a little thick, mine is, I probably could heat it up a little bit, but you can always just take um, a knife or a little spoon and um, spread just a little bit of that on there um, to eat it. Just a little bit like that, spread it on. Mm -mm -mm. Wonderful. 
Oh, that sauce is really good. Very, very good. And, that's, and that lovely sweetness is from that tamarind. And a bit of brown sugar, of course. But, mm, yum, yum. All right. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs>